Namaste. Um, hello. We're going to be talking about Sri Aurobindo's record of yoga. Um, now, I'm not sure how many of you have heard of uh, uh, record of yoga in the first place. This was a, um, a set of notes uh, that were maintained by Sri Aurobindo uh, to track and document uh, his yogic practices. Now, why should we even be looking at uh, a book like this and you know, of what relevance is um, Sri Aurobindo's yogic practices uh, to us? Now, if you look at pretty much any spiritual figure in the world, the process that they went through is opaque. You do not know, we do not know what sort of sadhana they performed. Um, we have no clue. Usually uh, people, uh, there's, there's some sort of a, a cultural memory that people have, uh, which is in, in most cases uh, exaggerated, uh, doesn't provide an aid uh, for sadhaks to say that, okay, you know, this is the technique that was used and this was the approach that was taken and maybe there's something that we could learn from it, right? Now, um, that detail is seldom available, you know, um, except perhaps in a, in a handful of cases. Take someone like the Buddha, for instance, right? Um, he has, to an extent, compared to most, um, documented, you know, there's some record of uh, what has happened, you know, or what is the, what did he attempt, what worked, what didn't work. But yoga, by its very definition, is a practice that is predominantly um, inside you. It occurs inside you. The whole magic is inside. Now, which basically means that unless the practitioner has said something, it's very hard for an external observer to say that, you know, this is what is happening here, right? You can't distinguish between a charlatan um, and a genuine uh, yogi or a rishi uh, because both seem to wear the same you know, garb. They spout the same words and so on and so forth. Now, as I said, we hardly have any record of what is uh, what transpires in the, in the mind and heart and being of an aspirant. Now, and as I said earlier, you know, there's a, there's a lot of legend that gets built up uh, because you know it's a black box. You know, people people could say great superhuman things about what has happened and what has not happened. He realized this overnight and, and so on and so forth. But as you practice the yoga, as it must be evident to anyone who has practiced the yoga, there's, 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 there are hardly any miracles. There's always a science, there's a logic, there's a very graded set of steps that happen um, uh, as, as you progress on the sadhana. Right. Now, now, record of yoga is, is a very unique work, um, very unique work because here we have uh, an, an instance where someone, uh, at least to my sense, someone so far, far above our station has recorded almost on a daily basis for quite a long number of years what happened or what was happening in his being, step by step, very small steps, trivial steps, big steps, everything, everything was recorded. Now, Sri Aurobindo, whom I consider master and, and lord of my sadhana, um, um, must have had his own reasons why he was doing it. We can only speculate as to why he was keeping track. But as we practice our sadhana, it becomes evident that there are periods where 
things are not what they seem. You, know, you need to keep track of things so that you can go back, revise, you sort of see uh, what's the roadmap, uh, that, what's the road that you have walked through. You know? And we speculate that it is um, in that context or for that utility, the master must have uh, written them down. Right? Now, um, what we're going to do in this series of uh, videos uh, is to, to just go through a record of yoga, um, the text, little by little, and sort of see um, what we can learn from it, uh, and so on and so forth. So, let me just shift. So, that's the book. You can find a uh, record of yoga. It's freely downloadable from the Shirobindo Ashram website. Um, um, it's a rather large book. And if we sort of scroll down, we can get some highlights of, of you know, what period of Shirobindo's yoga uh, does this book cover. You know? So as it says, uh, it was his diary between 1909 and 1927, and you know, he had kept it fairly regularly between 1912 to 1920. Now, remember, this is Chirvindo. Um I do not know to what extent you're familiar uh, with who he is, what he has done, what he has written, uh, etc., etc. But um, for our purpose in this particular video, we're not going to go in all of those places, uh, we're going to view it as a as a, a squirrel sadhak, you know, looking at Sri Rama. That's that's how we're going to look at it, right? Um, so that's our introduction, preamble, whatever you want to call it. So let's just dig in. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to specifically uh, touch the Sapta Chatustaya section um, for a very specific reason. Uh, we'll do a separate video in trying to understand, share a little of what we know on the Sapta Chatustaya. We will focus our attention on um, the actual diary entries, right? That's that's what we're going to focus on uh, to begin with. Um, I don't want to make this video too long, so I'll keep it a little short. Um, so we will touch the very first uh, entry. Um, so in case you have not seen him, this photograph from 1915. Um, for you. So I'm going to skip the Saptachatastaya section. I'll just move directly to page 33, where the diary entries start. Um, so I don't exactly remember uh, what is there. Um, I've read it many times. Um, each time it's new to me. So I'm going to approach this material just as I'm as I'd approached it the very first time. Right? I'm going to just speak whatever comes. Um, so I'll read this out for you. This is 17 Thursday, uh, June 1909. Right? Um, started Amavasya Treyasparsha for Barisan. Ramavasya is Kali's day, so favorable to me. The Tres Parsha is the moment destined for a great advance in my yoga. The Hankara was finally removed, only faint remnants of it left. Jay entered, but did not make herself manifest till next day. That's the opening passage. Now, what do you see? Um, um, Uh, a very uh, clear, very, very clear uh, uh, points, right, that the master has. Um, now, people must have had, must have heard um, this particular uh, incident in his life, where they say that upon instruction of his guru, he 
uh, got to silence the mind in three days. You know, one of those magical things that people often mention. It's utter silence, silencing of the mind. Uh, what practice his guru had taken I don't know, 10, 15, 20 years to master. Shirobindo did it in three days flat. Superhuman, right? But there's something so very grounded here, right? Well, what do I mean by grounded? This is not uh, the the price of someone who's who's uh, uh, already hit some very very high states of realization. We're speaking about um, what do you say? Uh, uh, the Amavasya day being favorable to Kali. And because it's favorable to Kali, the price where he says it's favorable to me. Right? Now, now in this day and age where, where we seem to have lost the um, our synchronicity with our environment, the sun, the moon, yeah, we follow the Gregorian calendar. Right? The, the faces of the moon are not relevant to us. We don't understand. We have lost the symbolism of that. Now here you have Sri Aurobindo educated in the West completely. Right? But when he is doing his yoga, you clearly see the alignment with the, the mindset of a, of a common Hindu. So this is the this is the sort of, um, you know, uh, practice that my mother would follow, or my grandmother would have, would have followed. This, this is the practice. Um, right. um, my grandmother would have followed, right? This, this is what every common Hindu does. You know? uh, now, you find them following the same practice, you know, that devotion in detail. Um, this is not a tapasya that says that I've crossed the ritual boundary and I'm not going to follow it, right? Uh, he, this, this, is Aurobindo, and he's very normally, coolly, very clearly talking about Amasya being a favorable day to Kali, hence it's favorable to him. Now, what do we take away from this? Aspiration, sadhana, is not just you know um, the the inner call, the the bright burning of Agni inside. Aspiration is also something that you manifest through every ritual, any ritual, with your very vital and your physical being. All of your being has to participate. Right? There's no skipping on it. Yes, because you have silenced your mind and your mind can travel high and low, uh, crisscross the planes of consciousness, you you don't skip the details. You you are grounded. Right? Now that's what I sort of try to take away from this. And here's another very casual statement, right? Uh, uh, the, when he says the Treya Treya Sparsha is the moment destined for a great advance in, in my yoga, you realize that he has already had what some people call as premonition, but this is much more than premonition. This, this is a sort of intuitive certitude. He knows it's going to happen. Now again, the key, even though he knows it's going to happen, he has not skipped the discipline. Right? Um, he is going to perform, put his effort to make things happen um, from a yoga perspective. So that's our um, um, very first sort of um, discussion um, around uh, Sri Aurobindo's record of yoga. I hope you like it. And um, if you want to have specific questions answered around this particular work, uh, please feel free to uh, drop me a note. Uh, or I have a comment, I will try to respond if I can. Right? Thank you.